It's Alan Kotler here with another interview for Secrets of Digital Marketing. So exciting to have Oliver Bohr here with us. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Oliver. How are you doing today? I'm not too bad, man. How are you? I'm doing terrific. Well, I'm really glad to have you on the show today because you're going to be talking about something that is really taking the industry by storm, right? People sign up for websites, SEO, PPC services, Facebook services, but at the end of the day, what they want more than anything is booked calendar appointments. They want sales, right? And at the end of the day, when you're working with clients, this is what they're going to be judging you about. And so why don't you start out, tell us a little bit about your agency and how you're able to work with realtors to get them booked calendar appointments guaranteed every single month in their calendar. Yeah, for sure. So, so I mean, like, like any sort of business owner or agency owner, I should say, we started off doing everything that, like I said, any other agency owner would do originally uh, was white labeling, got into some SEO and then sort of uh, narrowed down what we were doing to trying to do one thing for one kind of demographic. And I found that the more I did so and the less I actually offered, the more success that I had. So the way it started with real estate agents is we were trying to create the service where through videos and, and retargeting and this and that. And the problem with all of that is it just wasn't very repeatable and very scalable. So I knew I needed something that number one would work basically every single, well, not basically number one, something that would work every time. And number two is something that I could just either put on autopilot or just press repeat. And then every time I get a new client, that's really it. So that's what we do is we have an eight step system where inside of this eight step process that we follow, we generate leads and we, we qualify the leads. We book calls directly inside of their calendar. Um, and then we hand, obviously after the appointment is made, that's when, that's when the client is actually quote unquote handed off. Um, or that's when the lead is handed off to the client. Um, and then the realtor is obviously responsible for making their sale there. Um, we'll also nurture the leads for them. So, I mean, it's a pretty full service, um, system for realtors where we'll take it so far. And then after that, the client has to know it's like they own a home. This is their budget. This is their time frame. This is where they want to move. Sometimes they'll want to qualify more or less, whatever it is. But then after that's happened, after we've gotten all of that information and we hand it off and we book an appointment directly in a calendar, the realtor actually has to go in and make a close. And I think by doing it like this, it sort of gives it a little bit more of a collaborative feel that we can only take them so far and then that handoff happens. So that's um, at a very high level what we're actually doing for our clients. And that's what's one of the things that was interesting when we were working in the past with clients in the turnkey real estate space was when we were growing the agency, we realized that we can definitely produce the Facebook lead right? We can properly manage their, their budget and we can build out an awesome funnel that converts. But what is the next step, right? The next step was, well, now we have a lot of leads that somebody needed to call, set up appointments, qualify, and get onto somebody's calendar. So as an agency owner, you always want to think about what are the next services that you can provide to move that client to get the results that they want. So it sounds like you were going through the sort of the same process. You were figuring out at the beginning, providing these services, and then clients were interested in like, well, I got a ton of leads. What do we do next? So right. how did you transition from that part of being an agency owner, uh, figuring out the right services, getting the right clients, and then moving into more of the calendar booking service? Was that something that came natural? Did a client ask for it? Or did you just think that that was necessary to scale so that way you can actually keep the clients? So that's actually a really good question. Um, it was a very conscious um, paradigm shift that we went through where originally it was what can we do and then how can we make that work for our clients? And we sort of transitioned from doing it like that to what do our clients need and how can we make it happen for them? So we started working backwards, right? So now every decision that we make is thinking, what do they want in an ideal world? And how can we, or can we make this happen? So that will go from everything to number one, do realtors really want SEO? Like, I don't know, some of them, but for the most part, like they just want their commission. So how can I generate commissions? Okay, well, I can't sell houses. So let's maybe bring one, maybe let's come one step closer to, to digital, digital marketing, right? What we offer. Can I guarantee them a closing in a certain amount of time? Well, no, not really. Cause if they have an IQ of 15, I can get them the best lead in the world and they're not going to be able to close it. What can I offer them? And I kind of went from 
in an ideal world where I'll sell the house for them and literally hand them their commission check. And then I kind of work back to what's realistic for me to be able to do. So what can I do? I can provide quality appointments. So that's sort of the way that I went about creating this and creating this product that I'm offering. Um, but then, I mean, that sort of thinking took over everything that I'm doing, even when it comes to like the guarantee, right? So like, let's say in, 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 in an ideal world, what I'll do is either we do let's say if I say I'm going to get you 30 appointments in, in 30 days, if I say I'm going to do that, that means that if that doesn't happen, you're getting your money back. The problem is doing something like that is all I can, it's, it's imagine like a realtor, right? If somebody goes over to a realtor and says, I have this much money to spend and I need a really big house. If that's not the right budget, it's not going to work. So for digital marketers, like all we can do is I can connect you with the people that are out there. And I know that on any given month, 20 appointments is I'm going to be able to do it just because I know that there's that much movement. And to tell you the truth, 99% of the time, I'm going to be able to get you 30 appointments. But if I'm, as far as I'm concerned, if I'm not willing to give you your money back, if I don't manage to accomplish that, then that's not really a guarantee. So again, that's sort of what I what I thought about is, so now I'm happy offering money back on a 20 appointment per 30 days guarantee than not offering money back on a 30 appointment per 30 days. And I think this mindset switch of thinking, what do they want and how can I make that happen? That's really start, started to drive the decisions that we make. And, and I mean, I've seen like such an upward trajectory since we started thinking about it like this. It's just made a tremendous difference. I think that's so true. I mean, like when you're running an agency, like first you, you're at the beginning stages where you're like, I just need a client, right? Anybody, you know, grandma's uh, friend, you know, uh, this person, that person, right? And then you start getting your bearings in the agency. Then you start getting confidence. And then when somebody says, oh, can you guarantee something? Well, the only way you can guarantee you if you have enough of a track record, right? And when you start getting results, once you start managing enough budget, you start confidently being able to say, I can produce X amount based off of what I've done before. And the really important thing is that you found a specific niche, right? You found realtors, right? So it's hard to have a guarantee if you don't have proven ads, you don't have a proven funnel, and you don't have proven systems. So it sounded like when you were at the beginning stages, you were, you're tinkering all of this. Um, and then you took a bold leap. You said, I can guarantee X amount of leads. So for, for those, uh, first client that you had, when you came out with this guarantee, how did that feel in the company? Like, were you yeah. afraid that you weren't going to be able to deliver it? Um, you know, what, what was going through your head when you, you came up with this idea of guaranteeing book appointments? Um, I was petrified. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like you've done it before. Well, the first thing that needs to happen is you need to go through your dream 100, try to find anybody inside of your network, get a couple of clients, even if that means um, saying I'm going to work for free for a month. Um, and uh, not, first off, you pay the ad spend. Um, and then also you're going to provide a positive testimonial at the end of it. And that sort of allows you to get a feel for how much you can reasonably predict is going to happen. Um I don't think I've ever gotten, it's hard to say for sure, but if I have ever gotten less than 30 appointments in a month, it would have been like 26 or 27. But that said, um, you've done it enough times, you kind of know like what you what you know you're going to be able to get. But the first time you sort of put it to paper and you say, this is what I'm now offering. Yes, it's a very scary thing. But if it wasn't scary, then number one, everyone would do it. And number two, it wouldn't distinguish you. But if you want to distinguish yourself, you have to kind of go out on a limb a little bit. Yeah. But then again, I mean, every, every single time you say one of these things, especially in an industry like this, where unfortunately there's just so much mediocrity out there. If you want to separate yourself, you have to think, what can I reasonably do? What do I know I can accomplish? And then set out to accomplish that thing, right? There's there's so many people out there saying, I mean, there's a lot of people out there saying that they'll provide a close a month. Like for me, it's there's you can't guarantee that. It doesn't matter yeah. what the market's like. A lot depends on the agent, them being able to do their job. Um, then you've also got people who say, I'll guarantee you 30 appointments in 30 days. It's like, for me, I'd rather know that I'm going to actually be able to do it because it works to get people on the phone and to get them through the door. But then if you ever don't accomplish that, then it's a lot easier to ruin a reputation than it is to, to make a reputation. Um, so yeah, so the answer is yes, I was very scared, but I, I was confident enough that, it, that it, it could happen, right? Like another thing that people do is they'll say, I'm going to get you this many appointments. And then when they get on the phone, they say, okay, so it's $7,000 a month to get that, to get that many appointments 
which isn't really a bait and switch, but only on a technicality, right? Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. like, I never said how much you were going to be paying for $7,000. I can get you 30 appointments in 30 days. Like to me, that one also didn't sit right with me. Um, but like I said, I mean, it just comes down to like knowing what you can actually offer. I do very, very, very strongly advise and, and suggest that anybody who's not sure what they're doing and, and how they're going to get clients very quickly find out what their actual offer is. And the way to do that is think, what do they want? And think how much of that or to what degree of that can I actually deliver on? Um, because without that, unless you're going through your own personal network, no one's really going to want to click on your ad or work with you. Um, but once you do that, like double the heck down on that, like that, that's your holy grail right there. I think, I think it's so important because as many marketers are, there are in the world, you know, especially in the competitive spaces and the competitive niches, very few of them have any guarantees at all. Right. You can yeah. say, you know, uh, Facebook ads. Well, OK, well, pay me two grand a month. I'll handle it. And, you know, based off of these case studies, this is sort of the range that you're going to be in. Right. Mm -hmm. The problem is the client's going to say, OK, well, if I get the, those amount of leads, how many sales will come from that? Right. And now you're talking about sales, which is outside of your control. And unless you want to start handling a calendar booking, and unless you want to start actually doing the sales process, you're in a whole different conversation. Yeah. So I think it's very important when you're talking with your clients and when you're actually working on setting up these contracts that you set yourself up to win as well as the client to win. Because what will happen is if they have an expectation in their mind, okay, I'm spending five grand a month on ads. What will that bring me in revenue? right? You have to bring that back to realistic numbers. So in the real estate industry, you probably have a number that says, if I provide you with 20 appointments, right, that might lead to, let's say 10, 10 actual shows, right? From 10 shows, you might get one deal a month. So right away in their head, they're thinking, well, if I spend X amount on this, right, it will actually lead to a certain amount of sales. So have you figured out sort of this generic industry standard in your specific space of how many calendar appointments it takes yeah. to move people down the funnel? So your numbers are actually uh, quite peculiarly spot on, to be honest, is that uh, in real estate, let's say, and again, there's like, if you're trying to get a sell, if you're trying to run seller ads, those, those are typically speaking more expensive. And then if you're running an ad in California versus Alabama, obviously the prices are going to differ as well. So this is sort of a uh, blatant across the board industry standard, um, but I've seen it firsthand that it's 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 true, 100. So let's say on average you're conservatively conservatively going to be paying about three to five dollars a lead, and that's a pretty conservative number when you're running, let's say, a median house price ad. And that ad would be um, get a list of homes under insert median house price here in your area. Um, so you'll be paying about three to five dollars a lead there, um, including then, phone including phone number. Well, yeah, then they click on the ad and then they get the name, email, phone number, and then you've got to got the right you've you've got to have the right follow-up sequence in place, which took a long time to build, but once it was built, it was just pedal to the metal layer. But anyway, so yeah, so it'll cost about that. Then for every hundred leads or so, you'll have about 80% of those leads are absolute trash. Um, and again, these are very conservative numbers. So often it's it's more leads are good than just 20%, but these are conservative. So 80% of those leads are gonna be trash. 10% of those leads are going to be qualified enough to hop on a call. And then another 10% of the 20% are going to be, they have a pulse, but they're not really anywhere close to ready to buy. And then 10% of the actual appointments that you have should be turning into a close. So if you're running it absolutely perfect, one in a hundred leads are going to turn into a deal, which is actually pretty crazy that if you don't have the right systems in place, you don't have the right people in place to run this. It's like, there's no way that you're going to be able to, to manage it all by yourself. So one of the first things that happens one of the first things that I learned and I learned it in a pretty big way was that the most important thing you can do as an agency owner, if you're going to under promise and over deliver is to set that expectation, set those expectations very, very um, clearly. So the first time I had a client, I didn't say any of these statistics. And so they were coming in and expecting every single lead to be totally qualified like a referral. And they were qualified in that I, I managed to say, if they own a home, when they're looking to move, where they're looking to move, what their budget is. As far as I'm concerned, as long as the, the bud, their budget, 
they're able to buy a house in that area, that's a qualified lead. Um, but as far as they were concerned, they really wanted people, let's say with a million dollars plus budget who were like eager and ready to roll. Like it just, that's not what it is. That's a referral, which are never, mm -hmm. which are always going to be better than internet leads. Um, so the mistakes that I was making at the beginning was learning number one, to set those expectations um, properly because I know those industry standards, but un until I make them known very, very uh, clearly to my clients, like I'm just going to get myself into a lot of trouble. And that's exactly what ended up happening, but you live and you learn. Yep. <laughs> you definitely do. And, and it, it's those small nuances that when you listen to people that are actually doing it, right. When you listen to people that are running successful agencies, these are the things that take us time to learn, you know, and it's those pitfalls that luckily for the listeners of Secrets of Digital Marketers, um, that will save them this amount of time and these mistakes and reaffirm what they're currently doing if they are doing this. Because I, I found out the same issues too, right? If, you, if on a recent project build, I was building out a CRM system and we're overhauling their entire technology stack from the phone system, text messaging, to how they handle the leads, everything. And what was interesting is before I started the project, I asked the client, what does success mean to you? And he really didn't have a strong definition. And one of the things that I should have pressed upon is actually getting that in writing, right? So when yeah. you're working on your contract, when you're working on providing your as, uh, exactly what they're going to get by line item, much more than you're getting you know, a CRM with 15 emails, follow-up sequence, phone integration. You got to figure out why do they want all that, right? And when I was discussing with him, he's like, well, you know, I invested all this money in the CRM system, but I was expecting a 40% increase in business. Unrealistic. And if he would have said that at the beginning, you would have had not the wherewithal the to say that's not going to happen. Yeah. Right. So what you need to make sure is when you start the project, you get these numbers in line. So that way they have a comfortable feeling about spending that amount of money. And also you explain the factors, right? Okay. Maybe you might get a 40% increase in same day booked appointments, but that's different than a 40% increase in overall revenue. A hundred percent. There's actually a couple of things that you said that you really hit the nail on the head there. Um, one of them was to make sure that you talk to somebody who's done it before you. Um, like you're going to make mistakes and, and it doesn't matter who or how many people you talk to. Like you, so this, the nature of this game is sometimes you feel like you're riding on top of the world and nothing can pull you down. And then other times you feel like it's just never going to end. And it's just so bad. I actually recently wrote a post that like, owning a company like is basically or being an entrepreneur is basically alternating one day to the next where one day I'll be like, why in the world doesn't everybody have their own company? And then the next day I'll say, why in the world did I start my own company? Um, <laughs> that's basically what it is. Like you gotta, you, you gotta learn to not ride the, these, uh, these, um, roller coasters and speak to people who've gone before you and accept the fact that it's really going to suck sometimes, but other times it's going to be absolutely amazing. So that was the first thing that you said that I, I, I really wish I would have known at the beginning. Um, in fact, it was less what I should have known in terms of practice, but more in terms of mindset, right? Like it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay as long as like different people need different advice, obviously, right? Like I know I'm sort of going on a tangent here, but when I got married and people said like, don't insult your wife, like that was their marriage advice. Like for me, that was the stupidest thing in the world. Like, okay, <laughs> like, of course I'm not gonna like, don't call your wife stupid. Like, okay, like I'm, I'm not going to do that. For other people, maybe that is good advice. But for me, what I needed to hear was it's okay to argue. It's okay to stand up and say like, this is what I want. Do you know what I mean? So some people maybe need different advice. So the reason that, that I'm saying that is because something that I needed to hear when I started was don't get too emotionally invested in every facet of your client success that when it's not going well, you got so down on yourself. So for some people, let's say who they're just looking for a quick buck, that's not good advice for them because they need to care more. But I know for me, what I needed to hear was stop riding a roller coaster. Sometimes it's going to be amazing. Sometimes it's going to be awful. And I'm going to continue caring about my client, but I somehow need to try to disconnect myself if that even makes any sense. Yeah. Um, so that was the first thing. And then the other one was, again, just setting those KPIs and being very precise and crystal clear about what they're going to be. Because if you don't do that, like there's just going to be disappointment and heartache. 
Yeah. And what I realized is if you do not specifically it, let them know what is the deliverable, like I love it, 20 booked appointments. Like I know I'm getting 20 booked appointments. If I get 19, okay, you might get a phone call, right? Like I, I know what I'm getting, right? And I know based off of X amount of money that I pay every single month, right? If I divide 20 by that amount, each appointment is let's say 100 to $200, right? There's going to be a range. Um, that's very tangible. So the, the problem that I see with a lot of agencies, and, and this is sort of where I was at the beginning, was like, they're like, okay, well, I, I need a website. I need a funnel. Okay, great. Two grand. Here's your funnel. Okay, awesome. Well, I delivered my part of the funnel, but then they're like, well, the funnel's not doing anything. Okay, well, just like a car, if I deliver you a car, you have to know how to drive the car. You have to know that it takes premium gas. You have to know a gallon of gas costs you $3, right? So I think oftentimes when people are starting their agency, they're not thinking about these other preempted conversations that they need to have. Oftentimes, business owners, especially if they're not doing anything in the digital marketing space or they're doing very little, they don't know any of these KPIs. They don't understand there's a difference between a lead to a prospect, to a conversation, to a booking, to actually getting on a call, from getting on a call to actually tracking every single step, right? So the problem yeah. that you end up in is they say it's not working. Honestly, it is working because you're covering what you thought was the initial agreement, which was providing a funnel or doing Facebook ads. So what ends up happening, and this is sort of the dilemma in the agency world, is now I got you the lead, but you can't close the lead, right? So now it's like, okay, well, let me train your team, right? Let me show you how to use the software better. Let me actually help you get better in actually doing sales, right? Let me actually work on your overall marketing. Let me work on the follow-up system. Let me work on all the text message campaigns, the email campaigns, helping you figure out better lists and tracking and reporting and management of your sales team. Like, so now you're going from doing five grand worth of work to now doing executive level work. And this is sort of what I've noticed with some of my clients is you're so invested in keeping them on as a client, they sort of get you in this continual rotation of merry-go-round that you have to start doing these other things in the business to keep them on board. Have you right. experienced this and, and how have you really taken care of that in, you know, the clients that you currently have? Um, have I experienced that? I would say not really. Like when I started at the beginning and I would basically just, my clients, I was a dog's breakfast. I would do anything for anyone. Um, I guess maybe it happened a little bit then before I sort of knew what KPIs I, I could actually offer. Um, but once I got crystal clear about the actual service, then the next thing I needed to do obviously was get crystal clear about those KPIs. Um, what I found was obviously it's hard to kind of get your first clients because until you know that you can deliver 20 appointments in 30 days, how do you offer 20 appointments in 30 days? Unless you're going to be one of those subpar mediocre marketers that we all know and love who just says they're going to do it and then figures it out later, which I personally really don't like that. Like in nowhere else would you go to like Amazon's not going to sell you a product that they don't have and then go to trying to find it. Like they're just not going to do it. And if they did, then that's pretty scandalous if you ask me. Um, so why should we be any different? And I think sometimes as marketers, we sort of forget how much we're charging. So being that it's really important to know what you can actually offer before you actually offer it. How do you get those clients without the offer? That's a check and an egg thing. So this for me was the biggest problem that I had at the beginning. Um, and that's when it kind of goes back to work for free for a little bit. They'll cover the ads, Ben, give them a basic rundown about what it is. And then you can really make all of those mistakes. You know, you didn't set the expectations. It's like, yeah, but I'm, I told you I was new. I, I'm not charging you. I'm running this whole system. This is going to be a $2,000 service. Let's say that you're getting for 400 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever it is. Um, so that's, that's one thing in terms of your question of, did I ever find myself do, going above and beyond to try to keep them as clients? Um, possibly at the beginning, like I said, but that was only because I knew that I wasn't going to be able to retain them because I, I didn't really know what I was doing. That was yeah. a horrible feeling. That was a horrible feeling. Cause I still did care very much about them. I just, it was out of my control. So all I, all I could do is white label it. 
And then the ability to build a website on Duda, I was like, yeah, sure. I could do that too. But I was honestly, I mean, I'm not, I was in advertising, like traditional advertising. I'm not like a born and bred digital marketer. So I was quite limited in what I could even offer. Um, so I really did feel helpless a little bit. Um, it was comforting knowing that what I was doing was not my long-term business model. So it wasn't like this whole thing is a waste of time because it's not working for me. I knew that what I was doing was not going to be my long-term thing. I knew that I was going to eventually find something that was powerful, predictable, repeatable. Um, it was just a matter of finding it myself. So I know it's sort of a long winded answer to your question. Did I ever find that I met just ended up doing extra stuff? The answer is no, but it was only because I knew that I wasn't going to keep them anyway. So it was only a matter of time. And when they said it's ran its course, I just, it was almost like um, I, I was anticipating it. Yeah. And I think th this is interesting because I come from more of like the, the tech side, the, the actually building the funnel, like making the website work, making all the triggers work. Right. And you come from the advertising side. And when you're trying to build an agency of what you're known for, right? There's people that are known just for funnels, right? There's people that are known just for Facebook ads. There's people that are known just for lead gen. And as later in my career, what I noticed was even as important as what I was doing, which is part of the recipe, right? The ad side, in my opinion, was much more important than the funnels and the fall. But now when you put them together, you're going to get better conversion. Absolutely. Oh, for so, sure. so what was interesting is when I've been interviewing other digital marketers, they have their own forte, right? So you, when you came from an advertising background, right, you knew that there was both a sales aspect and also a marketing aspect. And oftentimes when I'm talking to new agency owners or people that are working on growing their business, they're a technician they know about how to build a funnel or yeah. they know about how to set up Facebook ads, right? But when I talk to people from the advertising space, right, people that were out there building account management roles, you know, doing prospecting, actually getting clients, pitching clients, and then putting together a proposal, these guys understand that there's a huge element of the sales aspect of running an agency. So can you talk a little bit more about your background uh, with the advertising and, you know, how the, those skill sets actually helped you, you know, overcome a lot of the fears that people have when running a digital agency, which is actually client management and sales. Right. For sure. Um, I think one of the first things that people that digital agency owners have to realize is we're not glorified freelancers, right? We're, we're company owners. And I, there's a lot of a bad, there's a bad reputation a lot of the time for digital marketers. And I've seen it all the time. And it's because people are doing things like selling something and then figuring out how they're, how they're going to deliver and trying to offer anything to anyone. So I think that the first, the first thing that will separate if, if it's digital agency owners listening to this, the first thing that's going to separate you is by viewing yourself as a company. Right. So you, you don't go to Starbucks and order a pizza. I mean, I don't know, maybe you do, but that's if it, if not, then that's just, they don't sell that. Right. You don't have to sell everything to anyone. Um, in terms of my background, I originally, uh, I was a copywriter actually for a while. So I wasn't on the account side of things. I was on the creative side of things. So I worked a lot with art directors. Um, I did activations, radio scripts, headlines. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, I got a gig in digital marketing once, um, in some random agency as an intern and I was like writing blogs and it was the most torturous, disastrous experience in my life. And I absolutely hated it. Um, but you know what? It was tremendously valuable for me because I saw it running as a company. It wasn't like somebody was running it out of their home. It was an office in Toronto. Um, and it was a company and it was the first time that I sort of saw something like that. Um, but like I said, like, I think the fact that my background doesn't necessarily come from digital marketing, I never had the option of lying to myself and thinking that just because I can run a Facebook ad, I'm now a business owner, right? There's so many different facets. And if you want to be a freelancer, then that's fine as well. But I think it's time that we as digital mar agency owners started viewing ourselves as business owners. Like yeah. here, another example I gave it, I, I love Starbucks because Starbucks is like, I don't even drink that much Starbucks, but as a company, I mean, they are just like a gold standard you won't go into Starbucks and see a type of one or menu because they're not a couple of people trying to play coffee shop. 
they're a freaking company, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you won't see that. But then all of a sudden we'll send stuff out and we'll duplicate messages and we'll have typos all over the place. And these funnels will be built like this and that. It's like, you're a company. Do you know what I mean? You're not like a freelancer. So I, I think, I'm not sure what my background has sort of given me that's allowed me to view it like this. Um, it's just always the way that I viewed it. And 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 it re I really don't like it. It really does rob me the wrong way when I see people are either doing it as a hobby or number two, be, being like glorified freelancers for the website. I, I think it's very true. I mean, one thing that you got to realize is, of course, you know, if you're in that transition where you're still working a current job, right, you got to work the nights and weekends. I mean, we were all there at the beginning of this, like, you know, but what you got to realize is that what you put in is what you're going to get out, right? And you can tell the difference between somebody who is truly invested in their business, both emotionally and financially and wholeheartedly right versus somebody who does it once in a while you know when i go and i look for people to bring on the show right the first thing i look at what does their header look like right what does their featured image look like you know do they have links that are actually going to the their website is the website actually live on their profile right when's the last time they actually posted something business related not just like pictures of them, you know, at, at a restaurant, right? So you got to think about all of these things that you are a business, right? You and your own branding is what's going to convince a client. And oftentimes I see a lot of people not taking this as serious as they can, because when the client's going to decide between you and somebody else, all these factors are going to come into play because literally they're hiring you they're hiring your expertise. And only once they know who you truly are, will they understand the value of what you can provide. It's absolutely true. Right. So, so, so talk to us a little bit more about your, your background there as a copywriter. You were working in some of these companies. You realize that it takes a team to deliver this pro these projects. And tell us a little bit more of some of this experience that you, you picked up working yeah. in, in the agency world. So it's a funny story, actually. So I, I, I worked in a, like I said, I worked in a couple of different agencies and I liked it. I didn't love it. Um, I had a couple of bad experiences. Um, and then there was one agency and this for me, I decided I'm, I'm done with advertising. So I, my wife had just given birth to a baby. So she was waking up. I don't know if anybody who's listening to this has any babies, but they'll be able to empathize with this. Do you have any kids? Uh, no, no kids yet. Okay. Um, it's hard to How old are you? Can I ask that question? Yeah. 31. Yeah. 31. Okay. So yeah. So she was waking up a lot in the middle of the night and I would go into work, whatever. So she would basically, whenever the baby slept, she would sleep. The baby was probably about six, six weeks old at the time. And then at one point in time, as a joke, they took my computer off of me. Um, when I got to work and they like hit it and then they didn't tell me where it was. I was the intern at the time. Um, oh no, no, maybe not this one. Well, I mean, this is the story, but I'm not sure what my role was there. I was a copywriter of some some capacity and they took my computer and they didn't give it back to me. And I, I didn't know where it was. And they were telling me, maybe it's stolen. I don't know. And they were like, maybe you took it home. And I said, I didn't take it home. They're like, you think you should call home and see if it's there? I said, my wife's sleeping. They said, I think you should call anyway, because this is an emergency. I said, I really don't want to call unless it is an emergency because she's been <laughs> up all night with a kid. And I would really like it if she just stayed asleep right now. So I know it's not home. They're like, well, this is an emergency and I'm telling you to call. And this was all part of their dumb joke. So I called home, knowing that it wasn't there, woke up my wife at, eight, at nine o'clock in the morning when she'd been up three times in the middle of the night. Um, and then she had to go and look around to humor these people who knew that they had it the whole time. Um, and sure enough, it wasn't there. She said, no, sorry. Yeah. And I was so pissed off. And I was like, I don't know where it is, but I know that it wasn't home. And anyway, I found out that they were hiding it from me. And I was so pissed off. And there were so many there were enough like kind of small bad experiences in advertising that made me think like, I'm out of here, I'm done. So I thought, okay, what's another entrepreneurial career that I can have? And I just went straight into real estate. And then I was having this serendipitous conversation with somebody and he was like, well, why don't you just start your own agency? Because the only reason you're not in advertising is because you don't like the agency sort of environment. So why don't you create your own? I was like, that's a fantastic idea. And then the next thing you know, I'm trying this thing called digital marketing that I had very limited experience with. Um, and I just immersed myself in it. Um, 
And I really did fall in love with it, but it wasn't by any stretch of the imagination, a smooth road to where I am now. Um, certainly was not a smooth road to digital marketing. It's sort of fun and funny to think about it after the fact and past tense, like the things that you went through to get there and the amount of um, unfortunate uh, um, uh, conversations or altercations that you had in the meantime, at, at the moment, it really wasn't funny or I didn't think about it as serendipitous or anything like that. But anyway, so here I am. And through those bad experiences and agencies, I loved the work, but I didn't like the environment. Um, I decided to kind of make my own. And and now here we are. And I'm absolutely loving being my own business owner, like being my own boss. And in retrospect, it was really the greatest, like all of those negative experiences, some positive ones as well, but all of those negative experiences in retrospect were the best thing that have happened to me. It's so true. I mean, like I was in the same place also. You know, there, there's been so many bosses, so many projects that, you know, you're like, I wish they ran the company this way, or you just didn't like the culture, or you just, you thought like, well, I can do it better. That's the power of running a digital agency is you have that opportunity to actually learn from all of those bad bosses, from all of those bad experiences, and actually develop that for you and your organization. Right. And oftentimes you start to realize and appreciate all of those experiences because now you get to actually make it work for you. Right. And I have I have employees who who they want to start like one of the things that I could identify is nobody ever asked me what my goals were. And I didn't really know what my goals were, but I was never asked. So one of the first things that I ask my employees now, because I, like you're saying, I had that experience is I say, what are your goals? What do you want to happen? I have people who work for me want to start their own agency. And you know what? I'm all on board. I'm all in there to try to help them start their own agency. They got to, you know, they got to give time just like I gave my time. Like they kind of got to give theirs. They got to learn these things. But when they're ready to move on, like I'm going to be right there with them. You know what I mean? Helping them. They're going to, they're going to make these mistakes with me as I make them. And hopefully they're going to learn with them. They're going to learn with me, sorry, rather. Um, because what's going to happen is I'm going to get a really motiv- motivated employee and I'm going to have a long lasting relationship with somebody who's going to be at least on the same stage that I'm on because they've literally grown with me. So I think that's also so important. So yeah, you were really bang on when you were talking about learning from negative experiences. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And, and sometimes when you're in it, you don't, you don't think about this, right? You're like, oh my God, everything's going bad. You know, th- this project fell apart or, you know, like you're, you're pulling out your hair, but it's only sometimes for me, it's been years down the line where there was just one little nuance, something that took me six months into a project to, to realize that now I can bring into a conversation to close a client. Or something very tiny that when they say like, what's the difference between you and somebody else? And you're just listing off all of the things, but those are all the things that you had to figure out, right? You know, when I first initially started, like, you know, they're like, okay, well, I just need a funnel. Well, what about like a six month campaign based off of yes and no segmentation based off of their, you know, specific tagging? based off of their actual purchase orders. Like you only know that because it worked or didn't work based off the campaign. So even if you're taking these small projects, even if you're doing some of these for free or you're at the stage later on, every single project that's positive or negative, you're gonna pick up little pieces to hone your craft. And that's what's gonna really make the difference between why they hire you versus somebody else. And when you talk from experience, when you talk from authenticity, you know, it can, it picks up by itself. And that's really the the important thing to realize that you're always growing. You know, one of the things my dad said, (laughs) which I took through my career always is he said, they're paying you for your education, right? Yeah. You got a client that's paying you to get better at Facebook ads. Like how awesome is that? You know, if you think about it, in the all the time, you used to have to be an apprentice, right? You would have to go work for somebody for five years as a journeyman, as a, as a plumber, right? Before you made any money. Now you have the opportunity not only to have courses, podcasts, seminars, everything available at your fingertips to shorten that time and have all of the knowledge, you know, decades and days standing on the, the shoulders of great people who've done it to learn it, but now you're actually getting paid 
to do the things that you need to do to learn and actually get better and better at your craft. So absolutely, absolutely critical. So I know, I know we only have so much time together. So for you guys that are part of the VIP group for Secrets of Digital Marketers, um, Oliver's got something really, really cool. Oliver, do you mind walking us through the ad and the funnel so we can see a little bit of the actual appointment booking process that you sure. were talking about earlier? Sure. Um, just, just to confirm, you, you want me to show you or to tell you? If you can show us, that'd be great. Okay, let me see if I can. I'm not sure if I have everything set up right now. Um, yeah, let me, uh, one second, let me get in here. and. So while he's pulling that up, um, you know, we, the, the, we were sort of doing some of the same process, right? Uh, the way that we won the Two Comma Club Award uh, for click funnels is we were actually also in the real estate space with boom conversion, which was an agency that I was working with at the time. And what we did is we sold turnkey real estate investment properties. And these are properties that people who want actually a renter in place, they want property management in place. They were able to actually purchase properties that had a positive cash flow. And we ran Facebook ads that said, hey, would you like to own a property without the headaches of being a landlord that cash flow, that's positive cash flow? Click here. People would click there. They would go to a landing page with a video presentation on it. They would then watch the presentation. And then at a certain time in the presentation, we would have a form that would pop up and they would take a survey that's at the end of the survey, they would then go to a calendar and book a time on the calendar. And then we actually had in-house sales team that worked on qualifying these leads and actually um, showed them different properties and then sold them the property. So we went from A to Z uh, process and we were selling properties out of a portfolio for different uh, fund managers. So this is sort of the traditional Facebook to video presentation, to survey, to calendar booking, to uh, sales presentation. That was sort of our funnel. And so within a year and a half, we sold over 40 properties. We did over 5 million in sales for our clients. And that system wasn't built overnight. Right. We started just with the first piece, which was Facebook ads. Then we added the second piece, which was the video VSL. Right. Then we added the third piece, which was the, the survey. And then we added the fourth piece with the calendar system. And then each of those systems had to be overhauled and, and A B test and honed in over time. Right. It like there was maybe, and, and, and keep in mind, I'm a full, I was full time on improving the systems. So, you know, when you're starting an agency, you need to focus on one piece of this as you go and then develop all the other pieces as you develop the project, right? So when you are working sort of to deliver appointments, there's going to be several different pieces along the line, like Oliver was talking about. Now, let me know, Oliver, once you're, you're ready. To yeah, speak. I'm ready to roll. Sweet. Let's do it. Let's jump into it. So you got screen share ability right now? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, well, first off, I think it's important for me to show you um, what I do for my clients, because once you've sort of got this figured out, I think a funnel for a marketing agency is the most tried and tested thing. It's pretty foolproof. Um, the most important thing is what are you going to do for your clients, right? You look after your clients, we're marketers, right? So we're always going to find a way to market ourselves. So once you look after your clients, um, your business will get taken care of as well. So we follow this eight-step system, the first three of which are just about lead generation, right? So targeting, I'm assuming everybody in your uh, in your master class is, um, they're all marketers, so I don't really need to get too much into this. This is really important, the offer. The reason we call it an offer and not an ad is, well, think about it. If you're at one o'clock in the morning and you're scrolling through Facebook and then I see this person is a great real estate agent, please contact me for all of your real estate needs or some shit like that. Um, nobody cares, Right. But if I say like, here's a list of homes under X amount of money, this is how you can make this much money in this amount of time. This is a guide to creating the, to, to, to increasing the value of your home. That's an offer, something that's concrete. In my example, it's 20 appointments in 30 days. So 
I cannot drive home the importance of an offer. Even if, like I said, that offer is get a list of homes under insert median house price here. That one that I just said, the median house price ad, that is a really, really good, uh, good ad. Like tons and tons of leads will start coming in. Obviously, there's a lot of qualification there. Um, and then ask for the name, email, and phone number. And then I also ask, do you own a home? And that automatically qualifies them just on the Facebook lead form, followed by an opt-in um, where they'll, let's say they'll just click on, click, get your list here, and then it'll send them to their list. Um, you can usually get like a URL through an IDX with that. And then you start to qualify the leads. That could be by way of a chat bot, um, sometimes a landing page or a survey, whatever. And then we have the CRM. And this CRM is actually really cool. The way we've built our pipeline is every day for the first six days after a lead comes in, there's a text and an email and a, and a phone call. So the phone call is made by someone, it's called an ISA, an inside sales agent. So we've hired an ISA, um, we hire in-house ISAs and they call every lead within three to five minutes. So that's lead in. So it's call, email, text, goes automatically goes over to day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. And again, every one of these days, call, email, text. And then we have sequences after that. If they're unresponsive, it goes there. If they ever respond to anything, it automatically goes there. If if the ISA manages to, to get on a phone with them and book an appointment because they're qualified, it automatically goes there. And that's the thing is that it's all automated. So we've managed to minimize the amount of work that our ISA is actually doing, um, which frees up a ton of her time um, and generates much, much, much better results. It allows her to get to the lead three to f in three to five minutes, which increases conversion rates by 400%. Um, so we've basically got campaigns for each one of these different, each one of these different stages in the pipeline inside of the campaigns. We have these little value added, um, lead magnets. Uh, this is just generic branding, but we've branded it for each one of our clients. They'll get their own branding here as well. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of work up front, but once it's done, I mean, you've got, we, we can build templates for up to one year. I mean, it's, it's really quite straightforward once you've done it. It's a lot of work up front, but if I was ever competing for business with somebody else who didn't work exclusively, exclusively with realtors, they'd have no chance. They really wouldn't because we've just spent so much time building this up. Um, and then just the last steps of the system. I know I mentioned it briefly, but the ISA is going to call them in three to five minutes and then the lead nurture. And I mean, that's really the whole system. I'm it's, it's pretty A to Z, um, same as what you were saying before. There's nothing really too fancy about it. It's just, we've got it. We know it works. It's repeatable. It's predictable. We've got the script that the ISA follows. We, don't, we ask as few questions as possible to get as much information as possible. Like little things that we learned as well, like along the way is the first thing we wanted to ask a bunch of questions. And then I realized that if we just have, let's say three questions, when are you looking to move? Where are you looking to move? And what's your budget? asked in the right way. If you just ask that question and shut up, they'll give you more information than if you were actually asking for the information, right? Like, so this system that I've got right now, I mean, every single step has a place that it goes to. It's meticulous. And I, I couldn't have possibly done it unless I did it. I couldn't have possibly created this without making mistakes. And I made mistakes. And now at this point in time, if ever I get on a phone call with somebody else and they're saying, I'm also speaking to that guy. Like if that guy also deals with realtors, like, I don't want to say anything bad about anybody else. But if that person doesn't deal with realtors, like they have no chance. They just don't. Right. Um, in terms of how I market myself, I mean, like you were saying with the lead generation, the VSL, the lead generation guide, um, VSL, um, generally speaking, just plastering your offer on Facebook. What do you want? 15 to 20 appointments in 30 days. Um, nice little ad, whatever. And then it'll send them just to a place, give them some information. Case studies and testimonials are so important. Video testimonials, not written testimonials. Written testimonials are like, eh, video testimon testimonials are dynamite. Um, you send them to that page, you say, book a call if you're interested in 15 to 20 appointments and they'll just hop on a strategy call. I mean, that's the thing is once you've got this and once you know what you're offering and I cannot say enough, make an offer. What are you offering? And don't say, I'm going to help your business. Right. Like, think about it. If someone was ever looking to lose weight, saying something like you're 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 going to be healthy. Like, OK, yeah, cool. That's fine. Learn how to eat right and blah, blah, blah. That's fine. As opposed to lose 20 pounds in, 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 in two months. Like that's something that people are going to click on, like six pack guarantee. Like, I don't even know if that's a thing. I've certainly never had a six pack before, but. That's I've, had something few, that I've had a few in the fridge before, I think, once or twice. Uh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> I think if that's the case, I've had a couple of 12 packs also, but um right? Like I think if you have an offer, it just drives itself. If you have an offer that you know you can deliver on, you people cannot compete with this. They just can't, right? The only way that you're, the only way that somebody's going to be able to compete with me is if the next guy's offering 30 appointments in 30 days or a close in a month. 
And they're probably looking at me being like, you can't compete with me because you're only offering 20 appointments. Be that as it may, as far as I'm concerned, there's enough of the market that number one is over promising and under delivering. And number two, enough of the market that doesn't even have an offer that like, I'm fine sticking with my clientele right now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then the question is, okay, well, you can provide 30, but what's the quality of those 30? Yeah. And that's really the way I frame it as well. As I say, like, let's say, then let's say if, if, uh, because people would ask, like, I'm getting more than 30. Why don't you just say 30? It's like, if I'm ever running low on numbers, the last thing that I ever want to do is just throw a couple of appointments your way so that I can fill my quota of 30 appointments. Because I, I, I have plenty of room to hide behind and be like, well, you know, they are still qualified. It just requires a little bit of nurture and sort of flip the onus onto the realtor. I don't want to do any of that stuff. I'd rather just be like 20 good appointments and that's it. And then they get 40 and they're super happy. Like it's better to say you're going to do less and do more than say you're going to do more and do less. And it, it's, you'll make a quicker buck. If you say that you're going to, if I, if you say you're going to make someone a billion dollars, you'll make a quick buck. You will. But if you say some, say to someone, you're going to make them a hundred thousand dollars and then you do, that's going to set you up for the long term. So yeah. less is more. If you say less and you do more, it's, it's such a better recipe for success. So let's talk about some advanced things. So w- with your c- certain system right now, are you running each client in their own ads manager or are you running one agency one with different campaigns? For each yeah, one? so we bring their ads, ad accounts into our business manager. Okay, so you have one. So pretty much what you're doing is you're pulling all of the, the, the ad budget together and then you are getting the leads and then you're having your in-house team call these leads and then only giving them the actual booked appointments. Am I correct? Um, so no, they, I mean, inside of the pipeline, they do get, they do get access to the leads. Um, I want them to sort of see that things are happening, that we're working. It's the thing that some people do. They just send a report maybe once a week with access to everything just to show them what's going on under the hood. I'd rather them watch it the whole way through. Um, uh, although I have been back and forth with that in terms of, in terms of um, consolidating them into our ad account, I want to pay for ad spend. And the reason I want to do that is because <clears throat> I'm not thinking like a marketer, right? I'm trying not to think like a marketer. I'm trying to think like a realtor. So for realtors paying $3,000 a month, and then I've got to put an extra $1,500 onto ad spend. Like I can't then quote myself as $3,000, meaning as far as I'm concerned as a marketer, oh, that's not my money. Of course I can quote that. But as far as they're concerned, I don't care if I'm paying you Facebook or anything, right? So if someone asks me, do you run Facebook ads? My answer is no. I run what I do through Facebook, but I don't run Facebook ads. Like you buy a can of Coke. I'm not buying a can with sugar inside and corn syrup. I'm buying a can of Coke. You're buying the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So yes, there's Facebook inside of my product, but that's just a, that's just an ingredient. I have the whole recipe that you're buying. So being that that's my brand, being that that's what I'm doing, I'm, I'm, a, I'm so much more than just Facebook. I don't feel right separating the charge of Facebook. So you pay me four to $500 a month. That's it. Like I, I'm not seeing, that's it, you know, and I'm not going to be thrifty with the, with the ad spend either. Got it. Got it. Um, one other key point here for people listening, actually I picked up on another podcast is as an agency owner, when you're getting money, right, they're paying you, right. Then you're taking that money or you're putting it on a credit card. Right. And a lot of people say, why would I want to put like my ads on my own credit card? Well, one, I've seen agency owners travel all around the world because of points that they got from their credit card and also cash back as well. So little pro tip right there that very few people are talking about uh, in the agency world. So um, you can definitely set that up. So you're getting paid, right? You got your credit card on file. You have each individual client in their own ad set with their own UTM variables, their own URLs going to their specific funnels um, in go high level or whatever system you're using. And then you're using their own specific tracking to show them not only the appointments that are being booked, but also as the leads are coming in. So do you send out a text message or email a notification to the client every time a lead comes in or every time an appointment is booked, every time they're moving further along in the, the pipeline? Just a reminder, it's, I, I'm going to have to go in about, can we close it in like two minutes? I can answer Absolutely. this question now. Yeah. Um, so I don't send them a, remi- a notification anytime a lead comes in, but I do send them a text and an email notification when, a, when a, an appointment comes in. 
Um, there's really, I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of leads coming in. So it would just be too much. Um, but I mean, if there's an appointment, like that's what they're paying for. So I'm happy to do that. And inside of that email also, um, like I'll just send like what their budget is, when they're looking to move, where they're looking to move to kind of get them a little bit excited about it. Right. Like the idea is to delight your customers everywhere that you can. So if I'm getting appointments for $700,000 buyers or something like that, like that's something I want to let them know. I want them to get excited about it. It too often, like, it's not a very, like, sort of, it's not a very sexy thing that I'm doing, right? Because a lot of the time, these appointments, like, they kind of need to work through them. So any time that I can make their day a little bit better by saying, like, this is something you got right now, just to kind of get that blood flowing, like, I'm all in. So not leads, because that's going to inundate them, but appointments, for sure, I'm going to send them notifications. That's awesome. That's awesome. So th thanks so much for coming on the show, Oliver. I know you got your next call to jump to but the knowledge that you shared, the nuances are so important for anybody running an agency. And if they need to be able to get in touch with you, if they maybe have a real estate client um, or they want to follow up with you more on social media, what's the best way for them to reach out to you, Oliver? Yeah, sure. So I'm quite active on Facebook primarily. Um, you just look at my name, Oliver Bohr. Um, or you can go to my website, boarddigital.com. Um, all of my information is there. Anybody can feel free to text me or shoot me an email and I'll, uh, I'll get, get back to you guys when I can, but I'm more than happy to engage in these conversations and, uh, yeah, feel free to reach out. And that's so valuable, you know, for people that are listening to the secrets of digital marketers to be able to reach out to somebody who's doing it actively growing their agency and actually has a proven system to be able to make a friend, build a relationship. It is the probably one of the best things you could do in your own personal growth and in your career to get to know people, you know, invite them to your podcast, you know, get to know them, engage in their content and really learn from people that are doing it. So thank you so much for coming on the show, um, Oliver. Uh, once again, this is Alan from Secrets of Digital Marketers. I'll see you guys on the next podcast. Thanks so much. Take care. Thank, thanks for having me.